Hey everybody in Crushing It 2021, this is day seven. Technically it's more than seven days, but um, in case you don't know, I'm gonna give you a little update about what has happened. Well, first of all, I know I've been giving a lot of assignments. So I gave over the weekend of not having assignments or videos. So people had a chance to finish anything they hadn't finished or catch up where they hadn't caught up. Then, so here has, here's how it goes. I told you a little bit of the story, but I'm gonna recap it. I have been doing some really in-depth, amazing success, personal growth and business development coaching with some like big time coaches and success people that you guys would probably know the names of, like amazing people like Grant Cardone and Trent Sheldon, Lisa Nichols, um, Dean Graziosi, just amazing people doing amazing things. And it's been a lot of work and a lot of, a lot of in-depth and it started in November but this month has been even more intense. There's been a lot more of it and a lot more challenges, a lot more things going on. And I got called out in front of the class to do a deeper dive and put on the spot about an area that I was struggling in and given a challenge to do a tremendous, big, monumental task. And it was both monumental on the amount, but also on what it was going to take for me to overcome doing it. So this goes into what we're going to talk about today which is another continuation of breaking through and self-sabotaging behaviors. So, so on this happened on Friday. So Saturday, I had a party Friday night, so I couldn't do anything Friday, Saturday. Well, I had to clean up because I had, you know, several days of busyness ahead of me that were going to be preoccupied with these other things. So I needed to clean up from the party. So I spent all day cleaning up. And so then I made a reels about avoidance behaviors, which was kind of cute, but I put it in the group, but you know, it's avoidance behaviors, which we're going to talk about in a second. And then Sunday after an emotional roller coaster, I finally broke through, started the process, did several of the um, activities by 9 PM. It was getting late and I knew I was going to be busy all week. So I was tying it up and I was packing everything up, cleaning up for the night and my stomach started hurting. So I having these pains and all night long, I flip flop, flip flop back and forth between stomach pains and waking up and stomach pains and waking up. And I'd wake up and be like, it's gotta be better tomorrow. This is just self-sabotaging behavior. It has to go away. It can't last. I, I, I refuse to be in self-sabotage. And the next morning, st still not feeling well, a whole other day, <coughs> all Monday, all Tuesday. And then today I woke up and I'm having another level of Ill stomach bug stuff going on. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. If I don't get back on this saddle and do something I'm actually not going to only not only break through, but go backwards from the work that I have done. So I forced myself to go in. And part of this coaching, I heard a couple of stories about one of the coaches actually said on his name's Pete Vargas actually said like he had just been going through like the tremendous pain of a um, kidney stone, but he was there, you know, working with us, training with us. And then they told a story about how Michael Jordan did his like big all time career, you know, game when he had the flu or something like that. I think it was the flu. So and it was kind of basically like, you know, professionals or winners or whatever, they show up no matter what. So today I was like, I can't not do this. So I started working on this project again today, but basically I was three days behind and I, I could have let all my stories, all my shame, all my pain, all my regret, all my stuff come up. But instead I just decided to get back to work. Now I still haven't accomplished what I intended to accomplish so far or what I want to accomplish at all, but I'm not giving up. And I have made progress. So let me pull up my notes here because we're going to talk about self-sabotaging behaviors and what this all really looks like. So I'm going to give you an outline. So that's just my most recent experience. But I remember the first time that somebody, my mom, love you mom, told me uh, I was self-sabotaging. And I, I didn't even know what it was. I was young, early teens. I was doing some talent competitions, like you know, pageant talent competitions. And I was a dancer. And I won the first, it was like local, regional, state, national, and I was supposed to go to the national levels and I broke my arm and my mom said, you self-sabotage. And I didn't even know that was a thing, but I know now that she was probably right, but I, that stuck in my head that I self-sabotage and I took that on as my story. I'm a self-sabotager. And when we take something on as our story, we make it true. We self-sabotage. So I would be in fantastic situations in my life and I would sabotage. Or do something stupid. In this case, it's a little bit different than, well, it's not different than that. 
So let's talk about what self-sabotage looks like. It can be avoidance behavior. So avoidance behaviors are, to me, they're things like, you know, bending or watching Netflix or scrolling on social media or cleaning the house, doing the laundry, like doing something other, avoiding than what you're supposed to be doing to break through, playing video games. But I also will take in the idea of behaviors that are going to alter the way you feel or change the way you feel or help you not feel so much. So things like gossiping, you know, talk, getting on the phone, gossiping, talking about people, change the way you feel, makes you feel better about yourself. But alcohol and drugs and sugar, carbs, food, um, sex, porn, like any of those things can alter the way you feel and be self-sabotaging and or slash, slash avoidance behaviors. But also things like getting sick, breaking your arm, you know, getting injured. Those are self-sabotage behaviors. And I know this might be a, a concept that sometimes can be difficult to understand because the others are behaviors that you're actually doing. You get sick, you think you're not in control. But when your mind is trying to keep you safe, and that's what it's trying to do, it's doing its job, it's keeping you safe. And there's a conflict between who you want to be and who you actually are. Your brain will do anything to keep you that safe. And you know that there's such thing as a placebo effect. So you know that it can make you small. And that's, I mean, sorry, make you, <laughs> does make you small. That's exactly what it does. But you know it can make you sick because you can also get well through the placebo effect. So you can do it in reverse too. You can become sick or get sick or fall down and get injured. It's not that you're making up being sick. You're really sick. It's not that you don't break your arm. You really broke your arm. And no, you didn't consciously fall down to break your arm to cause that problem. But it's on a subconscious level. Your brain is trying to keep you safe. So Lisa Nichols training this week was on uh, breaking through and what happened. So I wanna, I'm gonna kind of map these out for you and then compare them to my situation. One is the first, one of the stages is irritation and I had tons of irritation. First of all, I got busy distracting myself with other things. Then I got into irritation and I will tell you like at the end of the night on, sun, on Sunday night, I, I, went, I was like, I, you know what? I should have a glass of wine. I really should have a glass of wine. But I know it was all this anxiousness that I had going on from having these, you know, getting to the place where I could have these breakthroughs and breaking through that I just wanted to not feel anxious. And that's what that is, but I didn't do it. Thank goodness, because then I later I felt sick, but who knows? At any rate, irritation, which is a conflict between your desire and your doubts. So if you're feeling, I was feeling so irritated about doing this and why wasn't I doing this and, you know, trying to do this and talking about doing this and reaching out to people to do this and planning to do this. That's another thing I was planning and making all my plans and making sure my plans were in place before I could do it. Fall apart, this avoidance, you know, this conflict, this inner conflict of who I want to be versus who I am right now or, you know, breaking through from. And you have to be able to see and accept who you are to be able to break through to the next place. So irritation, declaration. Now there's two kinds of declaration, Lisa says, there's the I will and I will not. And she actually says the I will not is more powerful because I will is conceptual, it's in the future. It's not based in now or in reality. It's sometimes sometime out there. So I will do something is actually not as strong of a declaration as I will not. I will not ever have to say no because of money again. That was one of my reasons for starting my, my business and creating this income that I created another um, additional stream. I will not have to say no because of money ever again. Well, I remember in this situation, it was, well, I will not let this defeat me. I will not be embarrassed by the fact that I haven't broken through and done this. I will not go down without making sure I overcome and accomplish this. So I did have a declaration moment. And then there's surrendered action. So you give in, so I gave in. And um, my mine was to tell my mine is to, and I haven't done this. So if anybody wants to volunteer to let me share with you, to tell my entrepreneurial business journey to 100 people in seven days, because of my avoidance and because of my illness, my sabotage, I am behind. So if you would be willing to let me be one of my 100 people, I would love that and be so grateful to that. But I finally picked up the phone and did my first call, and I I almost basically cried through the whole thing. So it was so emotional. But once I hung that phone up, it was like, okay then I could do more. And I did more and more that night. And even today I did more and more, but I'm still seeing places where I'm not completely surrendering. So I'm going to make myself surrender because here's the deal. We all have limiting beliefs, upper limiters, 
self-sabotage. We have all of this. What we have to learn to do is identify it and manage it, navigate it, not let it manage or navigate us. Because most of us try to be successful in spite of the fact that we're having things or in, around the fact that we're having these things instead of managing them so they don't manage us, controlling them, uh, navigating them. We have to be in control of that. But first we have to see it and identify it. And we have to identify, you can't just have an aha moment and say you've had a breakthrough because that's just like a mind opening shift. It's not an actual breakthrough. You have to go through these processes to get your true, true breakthrough. Okay, so this is huge. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to tell you guys about this. I feel like there's so much to talk about. This is what your homework is going to be. I want you to just think about anytime you do any kind of regular avoidance feeling changing or sabotaging behaviors. Like look through your whole life and write them all down and get them in one space because you need to be able to identify them first so that when they crop up, you can see them. And it's anytime you're doing something instead of what you want to be doing. Oh, here's another piece that I did want to tell you guys. Okay. The other thing that Lisa said today is how do you know when you're in a limiting belief? This was great to me. Well, it's when you, when you, you have to know what your non-negotiables are. And when you're, um, what's the opposite of non-negotiable? You're, um, it's flexible. You can do it or you don't have to do it. Oh goodness. You know what? I'm gonna look this up because I don't wanna leave this for you guys. Give me one second. Non-negotiable versus optional. There we go. That's the word I was looking for, optional. Okay, so most of, most of you guys probably already know what your non-negotiables are, but if you don't think about what are, what's non-negotiable to you. Now there's things that you want to be non-negotiable, but they're still optional. You still are choosing. So it's convenience or conviction. Are you convicted that this is the way something's gonna be or does that change when it's inconvenient? Like I really wanna lose weight, but oh, there's that carrot cake. Or you know, I really wanna get fit, but I'm a little tired. I don't feel like going to work out this morning. Um, and then there's non-negotiables. Like what is non-negotiable to you? Like me not overcoming my limiting beliefs is non-negotiable for me. Like that's a thing that I'm all about this. I'm breaking through. This is the year. This is the year. I'm not going back. I'm not behaving the same way. My life is changing this year. I will not be in the same place this year, this time next year. And this I'm talking about in my business because this is a big area for me. I have been about personal growth and stretching and growing and overcoming my whole life. This has been my mantra, my story. It's what I love to do personally. It's what I love to help other people do, which is why we're here. But we're all going to hit places that are more difficult that we have to push through. And it's levels and layers and levels and layers and levels and layers. So this is a new one for me. Handy that I got to experience it along here with you guys. So I would love to hear from you guys. I need some feedback. I need to hear that you guys are out there. I need to know that you're trying to do work through this stuff. I'm, I need to know that you're having breakthroughs. I need to know that you're seeing things. So please give me some feedback. Tell me what's going on with you guys. Tell me what's happening in your homework. And just for those of you that are in the group, don't forget, I'm willing to go live multiple times a week so that I can actually coach you guys live and do a couple of Zoom trainings live with you guys. So let me know if you guys are interested in that, but give me some feedback so I know where you are. Thank you guys so much for being here. Remember your homework is to identify your regular avoidance, feeling changing and sabotaging behaviors. Mwah. Thank you, Crushing It 2021, you're amazing. Keep going after it and make 2021 the year that everything changes. All right. <laughs>